In today's tutorial, we're going to be going ahead and creating a King of the Hill system inside of Roblox Studio. To start, we need to go up to this part button right up here, and I personally have a cylinder already selected. However, you can click on this drop down menu, click on block, sphere, wedge, whatever shape you want your hitbox of your King of the Hill system to be. That's what you can do. You can even use mesh parts if you want to, but I'm personally going to be using a cylinder. From there, you need to go ahead and resize this to however big you want it to be. For me personally, I'm going to do 30 studs in each direction and then probably 25 studs going upwards. From there, you can go ahead and customize this however you would like to. I'm personally going to make mine bright green. I'm going to make it transparent, probably about 0.8 in all honesty, and I'm going to turn off cast shadow. I'm also going to change the material over to neon instead of plastic just so it looks a little brighter. From there, you can go down inside of the properties. You want to turn on anchored and turn off can collide. Turning on anchored will make sure that our part doesn't move at all and turn Turning off can collide will make sure that our player can go ahead and go through our part. From there, we just want to rename this to Hitbox, and we can press Ctrl and G, or right click and press Group as a Model to group this as a model. And I'm going to rename it to King of the Hill, just like this. And let's go ahead, open this up, and we need to add in a folder inside of our King of the Hill model. So I'm going to personally click on this plus icon right here. I'm going to search for a folder. This folder I'm going to rename over to values with a capital V. And inside of this values folder, we're going to go ahead and search for a bool value. Now a bool value, if you don't know, it's short for boolean value or boolean, however you want to pronounce it. And a boolean or a boolean value is simply a true or false value. Yes or no, pretty much. So I'm going to add in this bool value. And first off, we need to name this to is contested. This is simply going to determine whether or not there are multiple players inside of our King of the Hill system or not. From there, we can duplicate this and rename it to King. This is simply going to determine whether or not there is currently a King in the King of the Hill hitbox right here or not. From there, we can go ahead and click on our King of the Hill model and search for a script just like this. For me personally, I'm going to get rid of this print statement at the top and I'm going to replace it with a comment just declaring our services section right here. I personally like to do this just to keep the code nice and organized and I find it easier to read but it's completely optional and you do not have to do it. From there though, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable for our player service, which is going to be equal to game colon get service players. Now I'm going to go down a few lines and I'm going to declare another comment for our variables this time. Once again, just keeping everything nice and organized. I'm going to say local values will be equal to script.parent.values. And then we're also going to get our hitbox, which will be equal to script.parent.hitbox. If you don't know what the player service is, it's simply this service right here that you can see inside of your explorer it holds all the different players inside of your game as you can see it holds me which is rusty silly band however in your game it should have your user right here and if it doesn't it doesn't really matter all too much it probably will be added once you play the game but yeah it's pretty much just holding all the different players inside of our game this values variable is simply our values folder right here now this hitbox variable is simply the hitbox that we made earlier so let's go down a few lines right here. We're going to create another variable for what we're going to call the hill players. And this is going to be all the players that are inside of the hill. I'm just going to put this equal to a pair of braces or what we call an empty table. Let's drop down a few more lines. I'm going to create another comment for our functions here. And we're going to start off by saying hitbox.touched. We're going to connect a function to this and this function is going to take the parameter of hit. When we use the touched event for a part, we can use hit as a parameter and hit is going to be the part that actually hit the hitbox inside of our game. So in this case, it'll be the players, probably torso, arms, whatever it is that hit the hitbox. That's what hit is going to be. So we're going to say if hit.parent find first child humanoid, which if you don't know a character inside of the game, I'll show you actually, if you go ahead and click on play, open up workspace and then open up our character right here. You can see all of these different parts. These are all the different individual parts of my body as you can see outlined right here. And so since all of these parts are parented to the character, which is my avatar right here, let's say it was the head that touched the part. We can say head.parent, which is the character, and then we can find the humanoid inside of that. So what that's going to do is going to check if whatever 
hit the hitbox actually has a humanoid inside of it, which means that it actually is a character of some sort. Then we can continue on and we're going to say local player will be equal to game. Well, actually we have our player service, so we can say players colon get player from character and then this will be hit dot parent. That is going to get the player from the character that I was just talking about. Now we're going to check if player then this will just make sure that the player actually exists. And if they do, then we also want to go ahead and make sure along in this line, I'll say and not table dot find hill players comma player. What this line does, it's going to check and make sure that our player is not already inside of the hill players table. So if the player exists and they are not inside of the hill players table, then we're going to go ahead and say table dot insert, and this will be our hill players table that we want to insert something inside of, and then our player that we're going to be inserting. From there, let's drop down a line, and we're going to say if values dot king dot value does not equal to false, then we're going to say values dot is contested dot value will be equal to true and then else. So if our values dot king dot value does not equal to true instead of not equaling to false, as we see right up here, then we're going to go ahead and say values dot king dot value will be equal to true. So basically, whenever the player is going to go ahead and touch the hitbox, we're going to check if there already is a king. Then we're going to set the is contested value to true just to make sure that it's actually contested at the moment since there are more than one person in the ring. Otherwise, if the value is not equal to true, which means it's equal to false, then we're going to set the value equal to true because there is a person inside of here and there wasn't already a person there pretty much. Well, let's drop down a few lines outside of this function and we need to say hitbox.touch ended. Or connect a function with the same hit parameter as before and touch ended is the exact same as the touched event but instead of actually touching it is going to be leaving the touch and we're pretty much going to copy the same first part all the way up to here pretty much so we can just go through this pretty quick we're going to say if hit dot parent find first child humanoid with a capital h then local player will be equal to game dot players actually our player service i mean to say colon get player from character hit dot parent and then if player and we're not going to say not this time but and table dot find this will be our hill players table and then our player that we want to look for then what this is going to do is we want to make sure that the player actually is inside the hill players table this time when they stop touching the, the hitbox that way we can go ahead and remove them from it. And how we remove them from the table is we say table.remove, and this will be the table we want to remove something from. And then we need to get the position in the table we want to remove something from, which in this case is our hill players table. So we're going to say table.find, because table.find will actually return the index of whatever we want to find inside of here, and that's what we need for the position in order to remove it from the hill players table. So we're going to say table.find, we're going to search through our hill players table, and then we're going to search for the player inside of that. And that is how we're going to remove the player from our hill players table. From there, let's drop down a few more lines real quick, and this is going to be our last function of the day, actually. We're going to say while task.wait... And this will be about 10 seconds. This is going to be the time that you want the rewards to be. You can set this to every one second if you want to. You can set this to every 60 seconds if you want to. It really doesn't matter how many seconds you choose because it is going to be completely optional for you and completely variable. But I'm personally going to be doing 10 seconds for the sake of this tutorial. Now we're going to go ahead and do this. What we're going to do is we're going to say for underscore comma player in pairs players service get players what it's going to do is going to turn all the players inside of the game and we're going to loop through every single one of them and we're going to say if table dot find hill players player so if we find the player inside of the hill players table then we're going to check if the number of hill players or if the number of how many objects we have inside of the hill players table is greater than one, then we want to say values dot is contested dot value will be equal to true, and values dot king dot value will be equal to false because there are more than one player inside of there, so we want to set the value to false. Else, if the number of hill players equals equals to one, then we're going to say values dot king dot value will be equal to true. 
and the values dot is contested that value will be equal to false and that is actually all we need to do for our king of the hill script however we need to go into server script service right here click on the plus icon and insert a script this script we're going to rename to leader stats if you already have a leader stat script inside of your game you can simply go ahead and add in just a coins value to your leader stats that's all we're going to be doing here so let's start off at the top with our same services comment just to kind of keep our code organized we're going to get the same player service from earlier which is going to be equal to game get service players and we're going to go ahead and be skipping the function and then we're going to go ahead and be skipping the variables part of our code because we're going to go straight to our functions right here and we're going to say players dot player added and we're going to connect a function with the parameter of player and we're going to create a brand new variable which will be leader stats and this is going to be equal to an instance dot new folder so we're going to be instancing a brand new folder or creating a brand new folder you could say and we're going to say leader stats dot name will be equal to lowercase leader stats and then leader stats dot parent will be equal to player this is pretty much just creating a brand new folder and that is customizing a few of the properties of this folder and then moving it inside of the player and i'm going to show you why we do that in a few seconds after that we're also going to create another variable called coins and this is going to be equal to instance dot new int value which stands for integer if you don't know an integer is sort of like a whole number pretty much it's not numbers with a decimal point or what we call a float it's simply whole values like one two three four five ten twenty if we were to do a number value that's perfectly fine a number value will simply allow you to go into what we call floats or add decimal points you could say so this could be 0 0.1 0 0.2 10.5 it doesn't really matter i'm personally going to be doing an integer value but you can do a number value if you would like to. From there, we're going to say coins dot name will be equal to coins with a capital C. And then coins dot value will be equal to zero. And then coins dot parent will be equal to leader stats. So if we did this correctly, we can go ahead, press play. And you can see our coins will be up here in the top right of our screen inside of this little leaderboard right here, which is pretty cool if you ask me. But in order to actually update our coins value, we need to go back to our king of the hill script and we need to go ahead and update the leader stats inside of this function here so i'm going to say player dot leader stats dot coins dot value will plus equal 50 and if you're using some other type of value inside of here this could be gems rebirths whatever you want the player to gain from being inside this king of the hill that's going to be whatever stat you want to put here so have fun with that you can do whatever you'd like to you can also replace this with any other functions so if you want it to drop a nuke if you want it to play an animation you can do literally anything you would like to just by replacing this line of code with whatever other code you want to put here that is completely up to you but i'm personally just going to be increasing a value let's go ahead and click on play and we can test this out so right now we have zero coins and if we go inside of our cylinder right here then after 10 seconds, you should see that we got 50 coins right there. And then after the next 10 seconds, it's going to head and give us another 50 coins, which is pretty cool. And if you look inside of our values folder of the king of the hill model that we have right here is contested is set to false and our king value is set to true because there is a king right here and join our game let's go ahead and hop inside of our cylinder right here. You'll see that I'm going to be getting coins right here. However, this person is not inside of the ring. So let me move them inside of here right now. And you'll notice that although the 10 seconds will pass, I will not actually be getting any coins because we are currently contested. However, if I were to leave this ring, then after the 10 seconds are up again, you can see that player two actually got coins this time, which is pretty cool. And they're going to continue to get coins as long as they're in there. But as long as there are two or more people in there, you will see that that is not going to happen. So that is going to be how we're going to go ahead and create a King of the Hill system inside of Roblox Studio. If you enjoyed this tutorial just as much as I did, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.